So Pochettino leaves Chelsea apparently by mutual consent. And also Gareth Southgate picks his 33 man squad. Obviously, that will get cut down by seven, probably by June the 1st or so on. Now to the Paul Poch thing. Some Chelsea fans I've spoken to and been on certain platform, platforms with, they're happy. Some can't believe it. Some are shocked. Am I shocked? I'm shocked that they've had a good running towards the end of the season. End of the season, you can say Poch is, you've seen signs he's probably getting it right, getting a, 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 a feel-good factor. He has got good players, some good youngsters, potential up-and-coming players. So I thought, you know what? They finished six. After most of the seasons has been torrid, they finish above Newcastle, Man United, the Brighton's, etc. Halfway through the season, I thought Chelsea were done for. I thought 11th, 12th, maybe 12th again they'll finish. And that's it. But Poch turned it around. You can only see something positive moving forward. Especially if you finish the season in this feel-good factor, go into pre-season, going to be in the Europa, Europa Conference or Europa League all depends on what Man United do in the FA Cup final against City so you're thinking yeah it's probably happy days or whatever reasons behind the scenes or apparently Poch was a bit more sailing on players etc etc me personally I think behind the scenes this was already a done kind of situation before this good run of form towards the end of the season maybe mine's got changed a bit on Poch's side who knows at the end of season review, it's pretty ironic. Deserby, a few days before that, he left by mutual consent. Then I'm hearing some links. Well, Deserby's been one of the links, but I'm thinking, how could Deserby be one of the links where he's kind of openly basically saying players are being forced on him? He wants more of a say. Pretty much the same as Poch. Totally Bloom at Brighton. He made it clear like this is the way this is them this is the way they do their things this is their model Zerbi don't like it apparently but for me once he's publicly gone out especially that role after that Roma game when they got battered he's publicly criticized basically Tony Bream right in ways it was only gonna, gonna go one way so the fact the fact he's linked with Chelsea is a bit of a madness because he had a similar thing at Chelsea and I can't see that relationship, Bowley and the rest of the guys in the Zerbi, that will only go one way. So for certain fans that are looking at him or calling for him, that's a madness for me. It makes no sense. But who knows? There could be something in it. But really and truly, yes, got rid of the Zerbi, came into Brighton, kind of up the levels a little bit. But for me, is he really that proven to go to a big team like Chelsea or that experience? Sometimes experience don't matter, et cetera, et cetera. You get what I'm saying? Give the newbies a chance. But they try the same thing with Graham Potter. And just for me, the Zerbi, the way he comes across, I, I, I don't see how that works with Chelsea. I really don't. Just in general. When things go wrong, you're going to come out publicly and all that. Chelsea, there's more attention. They're a bigger club, bigger elite. So for me, if he is linked, that makes no sense at all. But overall for me, on a personal one, yes, Chelsea fans have got different expectations for the likes of me and my team could say they're spoiled they're always used to success yes they can say we always chop and change managers that's what we do but the difference is under Abramovich more time you chop and change immediate success we ain't had that but where's the stability I can see by some of the Chelsea fans are mad they're fuming some of them I've heard them and all of them it seems a bit split I'm just thinking careful what you wish for Careful what you wish for, man. You know, go and get another manager again. Have to go through the whole thing again. Then there's some players he's going to want and some players he's not. And it's the team, the team's play or got to try and find a style of play and it's all going around over again. And once you go on a little run where things ain't going right, then it's all negative, it's all toxic. And then you're back to square one. For me, that's a madness. It says it's mutual consent. I don't know, man. For me personally, it would have made sense, especially after this good run. Even if they never finish six, I generally thought they'll give them at least another season or until January. But they've got their own ideas. And for me, 
that's an absolute madness. Careful what you wish for. And it's going to be interesting who comes in. Talking about Tuchel, you want Tuchel back, et cetera, et cetera. Talking about other guys. But I'm thinking some of the other guys I'm hearing, are they really better than Poch? Doesn't make sense to me. Down to the England, South Beach picked. I see some surprises in there, but some good surprises in the England 33 man squad. The likes of Walton, nice to see Eze back, Curtis Jones. I think he's slightly underrated. He was on decent form before he got injured, easing. Some are crying out for Harvey Elliott. Slightly different players for me. But Elliott's pushing, in my opinion. But when everyone's talking about this, the attacking and the midfields, etc. But for me, people ain't talking about, for, for me, a bit of a concern is the defence. I don't know what Southgate's got with Tomori. I don't know what's going on there. They kind of, I was surprised to put Dunk back in there, etc., etc. But for me, in a way, they're kind of short in defence. Left back, you see Shaw there. He probably won't make it, the actual squad. But it shows the lack of options, especially at left back. You see Kieran Trippier there. He probably, he probably play in the left back position. I believe he'll be in that left back position for the Euros. Now to see Anthony Gordon there. Big up Anthony Gordon. Doing well for my beloved Newcastle United all season. It's a no-brainer for me. He's got a slight injury. He should be all right. He may be the guy starting on that left. Some say Foden. It's a tricky one in midfield. You're going to sacrifice what Bellingham does from Real Madrid that helped them win their league, possibly might win the Champions League. Talk about pushing them further back to accommodate Phil Foden, etc. But did he put Foden on the left? Is he... Yeah, it's a tricky one. For me, that's Gordon spot. Rashford, quite surprisingly, a lot of people were like, where's Rashford? You're picking other players that are not on form. Sterling's there, etc. Sterling can, can play on both sides. But the Rashford thing, about Rashford when he needs to be backed, but it don't make sense for me. He, he, morally and just what I've seen this season, he can't be in that England, in, in that England squad. Yes, he's been in the squad during friendlies and stuff where he's not been on form for Man United, but he's played well for England. You can rely on him in certain senses. It's a debatable one. But for me, nah. The forward line is covered. For me, it's covered. It's more like the defence. See Mark he back. In the shoulder again, I'm sure he was injured for quite a bit. I'm sure he's, he's just come back. Is he going to be up to scratch? See Harry Maguire in there. But again, what can you do? But that's where, if you're playing like Tomori and you see the defence options ain't great, but he can't even get in that squad. The 33-man squad, for me, that's wild. That, that must be something personal. I, don't, I, I really don't get that. He's overlooked him. Even players like Dowie should have got a little, got a little look in. You see certain guys in the, in the midfield, I'm like, hmm, I don't know, man. Likes of Madison, it's all the same old, same old. But it is what it is. It's going to be interesting when it's cut down by seven. The goalkeepers, you see Ramsdale in there. He ain't played no games. Nick Paul played a lot of games up until towards the end of the season, second half of the season, but he's back. He ain't got, he ain't got a look in. I'm a bit surprised by that, but it is what it is. And it's going to be interesting. I'd love to hear all your thoughts. The whole potch thing, I think, is wild. And overall, my opinion, overall, the 33 man squad looks okay. But it's just one or two. Three players, I'm like, hmm, or players that are not selected makes me think. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, that's what it's about. So, yeah, like, engage, give me whatever comments you got to give on your thoughts on the whole Poch thing and the England 33 man squad. Peace.